Thank you very much for me to this conference. And I'm sorry I could not be in person with you because it would have been really interesting. But I would like to present to you my thesis and my results from the Nordic Network of Web Media Project. Uh, my name is Silvia Hinkin, as you heard in the announcement, and I'm a lecturer and an associate professor at the Therapy Space Institute in Stockholm. So, um, my thesis was to actually the first step supporting agent about the land works. And my finding is something that we have a quick project in the three applicants in the Nordic region, and that is the one in that part of Iceland. So, during this half hour, I gave the background and results from studies conducted in this area. And I will also present my I hope researchers who are in the Norway, I'm the character from Copenhagen and the past that we have stopped it from Iceland. Yelena, Yelena's mock stone cryptid who are up here in the most of the monster. My name is Kokosir Dug Batardias, the Pakushere, the character of the mock stone. Yeah, we can go to the next slide. Uh, the situation globally is that most birth built its place in the parents' home from an international perspective, but uh, in many countries women do not have access to skilled birth attendants or specialized care. So for women giving one at home, it's usually not a choice but a consequence of poor circumstances. In the northern countries, on the other side, the vast majority of the births have been placed in an obstetric unit, and this has been the case since around 1940. And the decrease in home rates has reached its bottom during the last decade of the 20th century. So we know that women in the northern countries are civil regarding the social democracy and that all women also have access to public and public care given infancy and childbirth. So the attendance simply made to care is high. Almost 100% of all women have been able to check up in midwife or a physician. And the care is, as I said, free of costs. Another similarity is that many wives are the primary caregivers for women who have over pregnancy and unexpected normal birth. So many wives are also independently able to assist a woman in normal birth as long as there is no need for referral to higher level of care. Thank you. 
important also to study transfer rates, risks and risk factors for transfers, as well as the medical outcome. Viena iš svarbiausių pažiūrėčių dėl to moteris pasirenka gimtyti namuose yra jau stipresnis iš jūsų kuršerė. Na ir kiti motyvai yra išvarbinti, jūs juos matote, Helena? Next slide. Uh, women choose to, to give birth at all. Women from previous studies that women have a higher level of education and they give birth to a higher number of children compared to women who give birth in the hospital. Uh, we found in one Swedish study that women who have a positive birth experience tend to have the following baby in shorter time after this first baby than women who have a negative birth experience. And we also know that women who have a positive birth experience give birth to more children in total. So, in conclusion, having a successful home birth has a positive impact on the woman's and family's well-being and future reproduction. Čia jūs suvažate visiog pagrindinę išvadą iš švedijos tyrimo, kuris nustatė, kad apie 12 procentų lanuotų gimtimų namuose buvo pervežti vaikti Livonija. Panašus rezultatus buvo būti Norvegijoje ir tai palyginti su kitomis šalimis yra gana džemas transferų pervežimų skaičius. Taip pat panašus rezultatai su žemų pervežimų procentų buvo Canada, yeah. Uh, yeah, next slide. The strong belief in birth as a physiological birth process that should not be disturbed unnecessarily is common among women in man or birth. And uh, the women expect that they will be disturbed in this ancient environment and that they fear that this would affect the labor process in a negative way. And it has also been found that once we did researcher that wishing to have siblings present at the birth is a strong object for choosing a plan from birth. But the most common reason is that when you have for a birth is the opportunity to have a relationship with the midwife. Women want to know who's going to be there for them during the when the labor stops. And they also want to feel confident that this is a person they can trust and feel safe with. So knowing the midwife doesn't necessarily mean that there needs to be a midwife who is in charge for the whole period of birth, but if there is a team of midwife and the parents have meant to head is, is also preferred by the woman, they just don't want to be in the hands of a stranger and can go into a strange environment when labor starts. kuriuose lygina 900 planuotų gimtimų namuose su 11 tūkstančių planuotų gimtimų ligonėse. Šitie gimtimai buvo mažaus rizikos ir na, duomenis buvo surinkti retrospektyviai. Iš principo tai, ką jūs matote šituose rezultatuose, atsispindi, kad na, yra žengiai mažiau tarpėtės traumų. Svinkterio plyšimų grupėje paciencių, kurios gimdė namuose, taip pat mažesnis ir skaičius instrumentinio gimdymo. Gali? Ja, next slide. As you know, competitions may occur during labor and the number of women banned to be birth at home will have to be transferred during labor for after. In the Swedish study, we found that 12% of all planned home births ended up in the hospital, and the same, same results have been presented from Norway. Uh, internationally, this is a quite low frequency compared with other countries. The lowest transfer rate was reported from Canada, and the highest frequency of transfer has been found in Great Britain. Uh, have... Okay, sorry. Yeah, you can go. Uh... Helena kalba apie problemą, kad iš tikrųjų yra sudėtinga bezmetalinį mirtingumą palyginti pacijančių grupėse gimdžiusi namuose ir pacijančių grupėse gimdžiusių likoninėje, nes tam, kad nustatyti staticiškai patikimus skirtumus per natalinio mirtingumą, mums reikia 40 tūkstančių atvejų mažiausiai įvyties gimdžiusių namuose, o tą yra sudėtinga padaryti ir švedį tą reikėtų kelių šimtų metų. Yes, we recently investigated uh, all, all articles that 
published regarding gas parades, and we found it to the main and the other things from Norway. We found an interesting thing about when we compare different countries and trans parades, it seems to be an association between the number of transfer and the organization of care. So we could see that the countries where homeworlds are included in the healthcare system and guidelines are available, the number of transfer is usually higher compared to countries just like Sweden, where homeworlds occur outside the organized maternity care. Mortality, morbidity, or maternal morbidity. 
And I guess this is a slurry, slurry that we could have in the high income countries in the world today. Uh, chair, Mark, uh, okay, so now you, you finished already about this slide. We can go to number 10 then. Uh, I, sh uh, I will just try to, to just to make a small comment on this slide. Yes. Uh, the Japanese uh, the the Jūs matote, kad rezultatus iš, iš registro kimdimų namuose. We can move to the next slide, number 10. Yes. Manoš Tavė from Great Britain was a prospective study conducted in 2011 and then included all those who signified from Sanfini. Women who had a plan for work, were in the free staff making that bed with me, or in a long time work, were compared with the women who had a plan for obstetric duty to work. The primary outcome of this study was the incident of adverse outcome, and they merged, in order to have power, they merged seven negative incidents into a composite variable with uh, uh, different kinds of neonatal outcome. This was done in order to reach the statistical power for the aim of the study. Čia jūs matote rezultatus studijos Vidžioje Britanijoje, tai perspektyvių studiją, kuri buvo atlikta 2011 metais, įtraukusi beveik 65 tūkstančius moterų. Next slide. Number 11. Yes. Yes, they found that the first and very important finding was that healthy women with low risk pregnancies gave birth safe and irrespective of where they choose to give birth. There was a low incidence of negative outcome in all groups. One difference that they detected was that women who gave birth outside the obstetric units more often had a spontaneous vaginal birth. But nevertheless, for women who gave birth to this first child, it was shown that they had an increased risk for a birth outcome compared to the other three home groups if they gave birth at home. You want to translate? Uh, yeah, maybe we'll go to the next slide. Yeah. Number 12? 12, 12, yes. Uh, we did, in, in Sweden, we have a system where profits are not financed by the, the public funding system, uh, which, which allows all women to have publicly funded help when they work, if they choose to be birth in obstetric units. Uh, we made a, an analysis to see if we could enhance this opportunity for first-time mothers to be assisted by a midwife at home. And we included all studies that had compared the outcome for the neonatal mortality among first-time mothers. Uh, we found that based on this uh, British study, we found that the, the premium pairs had a higher incidence of negative outcome. And so we, we had the decision here in Sweden that first-time mothers are not supported by a midwife when they want to be birth at home. In the Nordic 
is that we believe that more research is needed since we can see an increase in pathogens in childbirth. We have a hospital work to provide information about the physiological birth process, which is hardly possible to get from obstetric units today. Pagrindis klausimas yra, ar mums reikia daugiau tyrimų. Ir Šiaurės šalių tyrimo grupėje mes galvojame, kad reikia dar papildomai atlikti mokslinių tyrimų, kad galėtume turėti tam tikras svarbės išvadas formuojant politiką. Next slide. Number 14. Number 14, yes. This is just a quick overview of the articles that have so far come from this collaborative project, and we can go to slide 15. Čia yra dviejų studijų apakšvelgti duomenis, kurie buvo namas jubentas projektas. Next slide, number 15. So, as you can see on this picture, there is a different difference in the organization of care and practice in the four countries. Denmark shows the most liberal attitudes towards home birth. It's free of charge, a woman can have access to a midwife assisting her birth, and the woman has the right to choose if it is, which is also stated in national guidelines. In Iceland, Norway, they have a virtually financed system, and there are guidelines existing to regulate the activity. But in Sweden, there are no guidelines, and also um, almost all women have to find a midwife and also pay the midwife by themselves. Čia jūs mamta lentelė, kuri yra lyginami tiesiog organizaciniai aspektai palyginimas yra tarp Skandinavijos šalių. Kaip matot, iš lentelės liberaliausia politika yra Danijoje. Šiek tiek mažiau reguliacijų apibrieštumo yra Islandijoje ir Norvegijoje. Švedijoje nėra nei nuorodų ir iš principo, kaip aš, kaip vėlė minėjo, tik stovomo komunoje moteris, moteriams nereikia mokėti užgimti manuose. Next slide, please. Number 16. Number 16. Yes, 16. This is the figures from Sweden. As you can see on the slide, we had just about 100,000 births in Sweden, which is annually the number of births that we had. During this year, we had now we have 63 land of births, so there it's very small numbers, and 42 of them were taking place in the Stockholm area. There are no other alternatives to high technology delivery boards that of that units. So for women who give birth in Sweden, they either choose a, an obstetric unit or this very, very small group who choose to give birth at home. Čia jūs matote apžvalgą Švedijos registro 2010 metais, kaip matot, labai mažas skaičius yra gimdymų, planuoto gimdymų namuose. Daugumai iš jų yra Stokholme ir iš esmės Švedijai nėra iš kitų alternatyvų, kurios būtų reguliuojamas gimdymui, alternatyvų gimdymui ir stacionarė. Next slide. Number 17, which is about Norway. Yes. Where they had a bit fewer births, you know, they had 60,000 births during 2010, and 90 of those were bad numbers, so it's still very small numbers. In Norway, there are several options where we need to give birth. They have midwife led units for normal births, where 80% of our women actually have their baby. They have 11 free standing units, and they have six alongside units in the whole of Norway. Situacija Norvegijoje, kaip matot, planuotų gimdymų namas ir jau paskaičius yra mažas, tačiau yra nemažas procentas moterų, kurios gimdo specialiose institucijose prižiūrimos apušėlių. Next slide, please. Yes, number 18. In Denmark, they have also around 60,000 births during 2010, but then 760 of these were actually planned home births. 
And you can see from, from the shirt that they have several alternatives in Vigyan Shalam, which is not part of Denmark. There are eight flights worth in the homeworks, and they deliver about 250 women at home per year. And this, they are, have similar groups all over Denmark with different kind of care systems, the team, team based midwifery or one to one care. And you can also in Denmark call the hospital when your labor starts, and they send you a midwife if you want to continue the, the birth at home. Uh, situacija Danijoje ir ženkliai didesnis gimdimų namuose skaičius tiesiog atskirais, atskirose regionuose yra skirtinga situacija, tačiau na, reglamentacija yra viena iškiai ir pacientė gali pasirinkti iš esmės posnė bet momentų, kur jinai nori kildyti. Next slide. Number 19, on Iceland. In Iceland, they have had an increase of homeworks during the last decade. So, uh, just in 10 years, they have been at an almost 400% rise in homework. And I, I just looked into the figures for 2012, and I found that they are over 2% now of planned homeworks in the whole country. Quite a few women give birth Iceland. They have about 4,500 births per year, but they have had a centralization of maternity service, uh, which they believe in Iceland is one of the explanations for the rise in, in homework care. Yeah. Situation is lonely. Next slide. Next slide. Number 20. Number 20, yes, and this is one of the results from our, our collaborative project. We asked all women uh, on a web questionnaire about several aspects of their family homework. But in this question, we, we asked about their experience of the midwife assisting the birth. And we found that women in general are very positive in all four countries. Uh, the percentage of women who responded that they would need full extent regarding the midwife skills was over 90% in almost all of the whole statements. Thank you for listening to this. 